You made a comment about Trey Lance reminding you of Josh Allen, I think, to somebody somewhere, and that ran everywhere because the Niners faithful is obviously a big fan base the future with Jimmy and Trey big question mark you like Trey Lance huh you love the way he plays love the way he operates how about how he handled the whole situation last year I mean this is an awkward isn't a kind of awkward situation going on over there or not at all I mean some would say it's definitely awkward I mean you trade three first round picks for a quarterback like there's writing on the wall like it is what it is it's the NFL's profession everyone's trying to bring in younger better cheaper players and then that's that's just the way the league is and so there is an awkwardness to it i guess but at the end of the day we're all here on the same team and we're trying to win super bowl so it's the lucky thing that we have here at the niners is i feel like we have a fantastic culture of guys that just want to get better every day and we love everybody in our locker room and so you know jimmy g could have you know he could have been a dick and said you know it's not my job not my responsibility to take care of this guy and put him under my wing you know, but instead what he did is he was a professional every single day. He didn't complain one time. He showed up. He worked. He started. He got us an NFC championship game and helped Trey along the way. And so I thought Trey took a bunch of steps forward. And for Trey to become a really good quarterback in the NFL, he needs reps. And so once this kid gets a lot of reps, just watch out because some of the things I've seen him do in practice kind of mind boggle me. So I'm waiting for it. Yeah, he's considered what? Great athlete, right? The, the, what was the big question? He came from small school, right? Yeah. Small school, mm -hmm. maybe doesn't know defenses or can't throw or whatever. Like, what do you think? Because obviously Aaron waited behind Brett Favre for three years, right? And I wish, and I've said this publicly a lot, and I'm sure the Luck family doesn't like this. I wish Andrew Luck would have sat behind Peyton for one year. Like, I wish Andrew Luck would have sat behind Peyton for one year to see how he operates in the building, how you operate with equipment managers, training, like everything like that. Trey getting an opportunity to watch Jimmy G do this, who's from the Tom Brady uh, mentor camp or whatever. It ha did he make leaps? Like, did you see leaps and bounds as him as a player, as a football, as an NFL guy? Or is it just like a consistent growth with him and he's kind of just chill? Uh, both. I think it's consistently gotten better, but like you could see – like Jimmy G is a professional through and through. Like Jimmy G takes notes every single meeting. He asks questions every meeting. Like he, he's in his books. And I think once Trey saw that, he was like, oh, I need to do all that and more. And it's also, too, we have a great quarterback room. We got Nate Sudfeld in there who's also got a – he's got a nice little silly release. I like him a lot, too. <laughs> He's great for Trey, too, because he's just he's a people person. He helps Trey with the offense, and he did a great job helping him all year, too. So Trey has taken, in my opinion, big steps forward. Like, if you compare him to last year's OTAs, I think he's two different players. And that's just exciting to see. Now, if Trey Lance is the starting quarterback, and if I say if, because I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, not your decision. Not your decision. Yeah, not, thank God it's not my decision. It's all you, Kyle. You got this. I believe in you. <laughs> but um, ah. all reps and you know if there's growing pains there's growing pains i think we have a good enough team around him from trent williams and nick bosa to fred warner to Bye. george die you to brant to Debo Bye. Bye. we have enough guys around him to help him out through those growing pains and so if it is if it happens it is what it is and hey you know what if at the end of the day we have to run the ball 35 times count me in baby yeah you love that huh just fucking mauling people oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. was that last season where you threw a guy and then continued to run or was that two seasons ago I don't remember. It's kind of all getting tracked. You're an absolute it's savage, every, though. Huh? It happens every season. <laughs> <laughs> George Kittle said in the first hour, Trey Lance, he said he looks like a completely different football player from last OTAs to this OTAs. Getting to watch Jimmy for a year has made him better. Trey Lance actually going to tight end university in June, uh, presented by Charmin in Nashville to throw to all the tight ends, as is uh, Zach Wilson and Nick Mullins, CJ Beathard, yep. Josh Allen, if he can make it happen. And Josh Allen. So, like, I, I think George Kittle has a lot of faith in Trey Lance. And this will open up a conversation about them trading three first rounders basically to get up there and having the patience to sit him for a year. Nobody else would do that, right? That isn't something that would happen. Now, they had a much better team than most teams that are trading the future of their franchise for a quarterback. But that patience and letting them watch Jimmy G, it might pay off in leaps and bounds here for the San Francisco 49ers. AJ, why will it never happen again anywhere else, you think? Man, it has to be the perfect situation for it to happen. So I watched when Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre. So Aaron was drafted the year before me. I came in, Aaron sat for two more years. Brett was the start of my first two years in Green Bay. And then boom, Aaron takes over. Well, we knew, I knew day one, I walked there into Lambeau in the practice field that Aaron was the guy. Like we're gonna be okay. Whenever Brett like decides to actually really hang it up, we're fine. Now, 
I don't know if they feel – do they feel that way in San Fran? Have we heard reports of that? I know now Kittle. they feel really, really good about him, right? Hey, Kittle does. And I think Kittle feeling that way makes everybody else feel that way. It calms everybody else down, too, I think. Not only the players on the team, the coaches, but also the fans probably, oh, okay, cool, we, don't, we shouldn't worry too much. Well, and Kittle is inviting him out to tight end university. He's trying to get Josh Allen there, and he compared Trey Lance like mm-hmm. a Josh Allen-type player. You know what Kittle's trying to do here. Uh-huh. This oh, is yeah. Kittle. Well, it's absolutely. This is Kittle trying to get Trey Lance and Josh Allen yeah. in the same area together. Mm-hmm. Hey, you guys want to have a couple beers together, maybe have some conversation. George Bye. Kittle, you know, out here pulling the strings presented by Charmin. I'm excited. <laughs> what if Trey Lance is a guy? Like, that would be great for the NFL. Obviously, we've seen uh, Mac is a guy. Yeah. Right? We think he's going to be a guy. But, you know, immediately thrown into the fire. Joe Burrow, going to be a guy, is a guy, immediately thrown into the fire. It's like nowadays that Aaron Rodgers situation would never take place, you would think. But if the Trey Lance situation ends up working out and they traded more than mostly anybody in recent history, right? The yeah. Rams, I guess, maybe? And or the uh, Washington football, football team? Yeah, yeah sounds like RG3. RG3 for RG3 yeah. with mm-hmm. the Rams. Or what? Like, they have gone all in and they still had the patience. I hope it works out so that other people will feel okay doing it in the future and there being some precedent, you know? But a lot of teams aren't going to draft a guy like top three, top five at the quarterback position with the intention of ever sitting him. Like, it means know, you don't have a guy usually, but the, the Niners had a guy in Jimmy G. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think watching a veteran quarterback operate is any position. Not even, okay, I, I'll, I'll let you finish, but you say it all the time. You wish Andrew Luck got to watch Peyton Manning just operate for a year. And I 100% agree. I think that's awesome. Not like, not even as much like, hey, why do you throw the ball here? Why do you throw the ball here? What are you doing? More of just like, hey, how does he carry himself? When does he come in and watch film? When does he like push the guys? When does he back off? How does he handle coaches? All of that stuff, I think, that you just kind of soak in from being around the guy for a year is the biggest part. And when and how does he say, no, we're not doing that. We're going to do this instead. Like the confidence that the quarterback should have in making like executive decisions almost, whether it's in the quarterback meeting room, offensive meeting room, team meeting, where practice, life, everything. Like, hey, getting a chance because you're going to learn that. And Andrew did. Andrew became that like three year three, maybe year two, year three. He kind of got into it. But if that first team, which is our best team, and we make it to the AFC Championship, that if he was the same guy he was, I think just in behind the scenes, man, leaps huge, huge jump. I think in the way he would operate it. So I enjoy the patience that the Niners have shown. I enjoy mm-hmm. the fact that they had the ability to do so with the team that they had, the success that they had, and Jimmy G seems like the perfect veteran quarterback to do such a thing, but it would really help out a guy. Like Matt Ryan here in a couple of years, however long he wants to play. I don't know how long he wants to play. If he wants to play two more years, wants to play three more years, whatever the fucking case, if he makes that decision and then they go get a guy and that guy can watch Matt Ryan, who Jim Irsay has called a Navy SEAL mm-hmm. and an astronaut. And like, a, you know, and Reggie Wayne says it makes him almost vomit how much he reminds him of Peyton Manning. Like that is, he said, almost makes me sick to my stomach that I vomit how much he reminds. If a young guy could watch like Matt Ryan operate, like when he says to an offensive coordinator, when they drop, ah, I don't, I'm not, I don't like this play. Like, I don't like this play. Let's not fucking do it. Like those little things, I think that it takes a little bit for everybody to get used to being that like powerful is a huge jumpstart. And Trey Lance might've already had the perfect mentor in Jimmy G.